Hello everyone and welcome back to the Adams Eats Kitchen. How are we all? Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, just before we get started, I just want to quickly apologise for the lack of a video on Friday. I did post on Facebook the reason why. Basically work's getting really hectic at the minute, you know, there's lots going on, it's a really busy time of year. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to have a day off. I'm going to relax, I'm not going to do anything, I'm going to sit in my pants and just kind of watch telly and just vegetate basically. But back to normal now, nice and refreshed, nice and relaxed. Uh, so we're gonna get on and make this recipe. Now what have I got for you today? I've got some slow roasted pork belly. I'm gonna put it on the Sunday roast playlist and it's a beautiful cut of meat. It's really, really simple to cook. It's really juicy, tender, and it's relatively cheap as well. And if you cook it like I show you, you're gonna get lovely, beautiful, crisp crackling all the way across the top, which let's be honest, is the best bit. So that's what we're gonna make, it's really, really simple. Just stick your finger on that pause button and you can make a list of those ingredients. And just for the benefit of some of my subscribers, you know, you've messaged me saying, you know, that when I put the ingredients up on the screen, it's not up long enough, you don't have time to pause. I do put all the ingredients in the description as well, so you don't have to kind of pause and wait and get the right timing. You can go down to the description and get it all from there. Right, so let's crack on with this recipe. The first thing we need to do is go and chop up some veg, which is gonna act as a trivet for our pork belly. Okay, so I've got my veg here, a very simple mix. I've got celery, I've got carrots, and I've got shallots. Now you can mix it up a bit, you know, fennel will be quite nice in there. Some parsnips maybe, some nice kind of root vegetables. I've also got some garlic, and I'm gonna chuck some thyme and bay leaf in as well. Now before we do any kind of chopping, the first thing you need to do is get your oven on to its maximum setting. I've got mine to get mark 10. Put it on as high as it'll go, get it nice and hot, because we're gonna need that initial high heat to get our crackling going. So I've got my oven on, and the first thing I'm gonna do is chop up some celery. Okay, I'm gonna use a couple of sticks. Okay, just brush off any soil that might be on there. You don't need to be fancy with it. All we're gonna do is just chop this into chunks, you know, fairly large, because this is gonna break down in the oven anyway, because it's gonna be cooking for quite a long time. Okay, just like that, gather it all up, pop it in your roasting tray. Same thing with the carrots. I'm probably gonna use two large ones like this. Nip off the tops, and then again, just chop it into chunks. You don't need to peel the carrots or anything like that. This is really simple cooking, folks. I'll lob those in. And then the next thing are shallots. I'm gonna get a bowl, actually, just for my rubbish. You know, a tidy kitchen is a happy kitchen, as they say. Do they say that? I don't know. I'm just gonna take off the root parts of the shallot like that. I'm not even gonna peel them. I'm just gonna cut them in half, just like so. Stick them in. Probably do four, I think, will be enough. If you're using just whole onions, then obviously cut them into quarters get this out of the way. Next we're going to throw in some garlic. Use however many you want. If you like garlic, use loads. If you don't like garlic so much, use less. I've got six cloves there. I think that's going to be enough. I'm just going to lightly bash them just so they open up a bit and chuck those in. And the next thing we need is some bay leaves. Right, so I've got my bay leaves, I'm gonna chuck those in. I've also got a few sprigs of thyme here, you know, just to add extra flavor, get those in. Okay, so that's it, that's the base trivet done. We can now get on and prepare the pork. Right, so I've got my pork belly here. Um, I've got two small pieces here. Just because where I got it from, you know, I don't know, they're feeding like miniature people or something. I mean, that's like a bite size to me. So I've got two pieces here. But if you're using a bigger joint, the same principle applies. Now the question you're all probably asking is what's the secret to really good crackling? Now good crackling is very easy to achieve providing you follow a simple rule. And that rule is moisture is your enemy, fat is your friend. And basically what that means is you need to make sure that the skin is nice and dry. So if you've bought a piece of pork and it's, you know, kind of wraps in that backpack stuff, you need to get that out, leave it to air dry for an hour or so, so the skin is nice and dry, pat it dry with kitchen paper, or in this case, I'm gonna use a clean tea towel, okay? You don't want any moisture on there whatsoever. We're gonna put a bit of olive oil on it because that's gonna help it get it going. But you know, you don't want any moisture at all. Okay, so that's nice and dry. I also advise as well that if you're buying pork from a supermarket, that it's not pre-scored. Normally I find if you buy it from a supermarket and it's pre-scored, it's normally gone through a machine. You know, there's, there's no care taken with it. And the cuts go too deep. They go right into the meat, which again, if you cut into the meat, all that moisture is gonna come up 
and it's just going to knacker your crackling. But what we do need to do is to score the skin just into the fat because what's going to happen is that fat is going to kind of render up a bit through the skin, puff it up and make it nice and crisp. And to do that I'm going to use a craft knife, uh, a really good tool for this kind of thing because it's nice and sharp and also you can control the depth of the blade as well. So I'm going to take it down to its minimum kind of setting so it's nice and shallow. You don't want to go too deep, right? it's really important. And I'm going to take one of these pieces and I'm just going to show you how to do that. Turn it so you can see. And you can see just underneath the, uh, the skin, there's a layer of fat, and then obviously you've got the layer of meat there. You don't want to go into the meat, you just want to go through the skin and just into the fat, so we're going to lightly score it. So just take in your Stanley knife, just start at one end, and just use your knife nice and carefully to go into that skin, and just keep working all the way along. You can make a nice fancy diamond pattern if you want to. Just be very careful and take your time. Okay, so just like that. And if I show you, hopefully you can see I've cut into there. Okay, but I've not gone into the meat. So I'm going to do the same with the other piece of pork belly and then we can get on and season it. Right, so both my pieces of pork belly are nice and scored. And now we can get on and season them. And for that, I'm going to need just a touch of olive oil. Now remember what I said, moisture is your enemy, fat i.e. oil is your friend. So just to help get this crackling going, I'm just going to massage in just a bit of olive oil, just get some in your hand, and then just rub it all over the skin. Same with the other one, get that in. Next we're going to add some salt, just over the top. Then also the undersides as well. Some pepper. And flip those back over. And then here I've got some fennel seeds, Pork and fennel is amazing together. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of those over the top, press it in, try and get some of the fennel seeds into those little crevices. A few more underneath, and that is it. That's your pork belly seasoned. We'll now get this onto our trivet of veg. Okay, and then just before it goes into the oven, I've got some cider here, and I'm just gonna pour this into the bottom of the tray. You can use stock, you can use wine, water even. And what this will do is it will prevent the veg from kind of catching on the bottom and burning, and it'll also add flavor to your gravy as well. Okay, there's no exact amount, you just basically want enough to cover the bottom of the pan, you know, just so it comes up to the top of the veg. And that is now ready for the oven. So what we need to do is cook the pork belly on maximum heat for about 20 minutes. That will really start to get the crackling going. And then turn the heat down to nice and low, probably about gas mark three. And those two pieces weigh about a kilogram, so that's gonna take about two hours to cook, nice and low. The same principle applies if you're using a bigger joint, you know, you leave it longer. Now it's a very forgiving meat, all right? It's very hard to overcook pork belly. So if you're a bit unsure, you're worried it's not gonna be tender, leave it a bit longer. So I'll see you folks in about two hours. We'll get it out of the oven and hopefully we've got some nice crackling. Right, okay, so this belly pork's been cooking for about two and a half hours. Just check it halfway through to make sure the pan hasn't dried out. If it has, just add a bit more water. Right, so let's get this out of the oven and have a look. Right, and there we have it, our beautifully roasted pork belly. You can see that skin is nice and crisp. Now it's very crucial that we need to let this rest so all those juices can reabsorb back into the meat. And that crackling, as it air dries, it's just gonna get crispier and crispier and crispier. So I'm gonna take these out, put them onto a chopping board whilst we make the gravy. I'm just gonna leave them on the board here. Don't cover them with anything, don't put any tin foil over the top, because that's gonna create steam. Steam is moisture, and what did I say earlier? Moisture is your enemy. So I'm just gonna leave these to one side to rest for about 15 minutes whilst we get on and make the gravy. Right then, to make this gravy, really, really simple. And this works for most kind of roast meats, if you're making roast beef. Uh, roast chicken, anything like that. Obviously you change the stock if you're using roast beef, uh, but for this I'm just gonna use chicken stock. So all you need to do with all this veg and stuff that's in here, the garlic, you know, the carrots and those shallots, they've gone nice and soft. So taking a fork or a potato masher, just kind of you know, squish it about a bit. This just helps release some of that flavor. Now we're gonna get it onto the heat, uh, not too hot, kind of a medium heat. And then I'm gonna add just a generous knob of butter. This is gonna help make the sauce nice and shiny and help to make like a thick roux for the gravy as well. Okay, and then you just wanna melt that butter through and give it a good scrape. Make sure you get all those kind of bits off the bottom and then sprinkle in some flour. I would say, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons maybe. And then again, just mix that all through with the vegetables and the butter and the fat from the pork. Don't worry, I know it looks a mess. All right, but we are gonna strain this afterwards, so don't worry too much. And then I'm gonna add some chicken stock. 
And what I'm going to do is just simmer that for about 10 minutes or so till all those flavours are kind of mingled together and we've got a nice thick gravy. If it looks like it's going too thick then obviously add a bit of water but I reckon in about 10 minutes that's going to be absolutely luscious. Right, so my gravy is done, got it here. Um, all I did was just strain it through a sieve and just using the back of a spoon, just press it through the sieve to get all those juices and all that kind of flavor into the gravy. Now you also may notice that these have kind of gone a bit smaller. Uh, and the reason for that is, is I had to remove the bones from underneath. Otherwise, when you slice it, you're not gonna get nice slices. But of course, the star of the show is the pork belly itself. And then you can hear that crackling. You know, get a bit closer, some ASMR crackling. So let's go in for the big reveal, the thing you've all been waiting for. I'm going to use this piece here because this is the better piece. I'm just going to cut into that so you can see what it looks like inside. Okay, and there we have it. Lovely juicy pork and then a nice crisp crackling as well. So I'm going to take a picture of this for the thumbnail, we'll come back and we'll have a taste. I'm just going to cut myself off a nice piece, go for that crackling, let's try some of that first. I love crackling. And every time I make this, it turns me into a hazy coma of pork iron bliss. It's crunchy, it's salty, and you've got that nice kind of punch from the fennel seeds as well. And for the meat, juicy, really tender. And because it's been slow roasted, most of that fat has rendered out. And what fat is left in there is really nice and soft. I'll try a bit with that gravy. It's nice and thick and viscous. The gravy's delicious, really savoury. Got that flavour of the pork and a nice background flavour of that garlic as well. Now because I'm nice, I'm going to give you a nice bit of a close-up with this. I'm going to bring a piece to the camera so you can see. So you can see that lovely golden crisp crackling and then that lovely juicy meat inside. Fwah. Well, there we are folks. Easy as that. My simple slow roasted pork belly with fennel seeds and a gravy to boot. Now I will of course stick this in the Sunday Roast playlist as well and I will put a link to that playlist at the end of the video. Check it out because there's plenty of other recipes in there and I'm slowly building up more. Serve it up with my roast potato recipe, you know that gravy, some nice steamed veg and I'll be absolutely stonking. Well guys that about wraps up today's video. I hope you found it informative. Now if you enjoyed this video then stick a like on it and leave a comment below and also guys as usual if you've got any recipe suggestions then leave those in the comments section as well. And as always folks I'll see you guys next time for more tasty fun and frolics and I'm off to stuff my face with crackling. Mm.